So this is step two of my project and this is creating my high res which is going to be done in ZBrush. So the first thing I'm going to explain in this project is the information that I learned and how I approached this. So my first concern was focusing the most on my bookcase and trying to get those engravings um, as close as I could to the concept. So here you can see that I have a lot of these indents um, or engravings in the wood. Um, it's mostly swirls. They have a organic feel to it. So it's not just a straight line. It actually feels as though it's part of the um, feel of the project. So I spent most of my time looking at that and trying to figure, it, figure out how to achieve that look uh, without having to model it into a high res um, model or just, you know, straight up creating this in Substance Painter. But I was able to achieve it in um, ZBrush um, after like two failed attempts. And the two failed attempts were modeling it in in the high res model of Maya and then I brought it in just looked awful I didn't even touch my project for a week after that happened I took a breath went back to my project and tried a new method which was masking uh, the area out so if you see I ended up masking so I'm gonna turn off these so we can just focus on my bookcase so here I thought it'd be a brilliant idea to mask this out <laughs> change it go to the move and push it inwards. And as you can see, it created a lot of problems. I worked on that for around a week and after seeing no progress done, I decided to take a break and work on my other portfolio project that was due for school. And actually working on that project gave me a ton of insight of how to work on this project because I ended up working with a wooden beam that was stylized and one of my lab instructors actually sent me a tutorial on how to achieve that wooden beam look to it um, and it was more of a traditional wooden texture it was just stylized but seeing the brushes that they used and seeing the techniques that they were using on that project helped me realize what I needed to do so in this case I will be explaining it to you so um, what I did to achieve this look was I first went to the stroke, went to lazy mouse and turned it on. So right now the radius is at one, but it was at 20, uh, when I started working on this and I alternated between two brushes. I used the orb cracks and this is from the orb brush pack it is free and it is online and i would recommend anyone no matter what type of art style you lean towards or work with to download these these are amazing and they have a variety of brushes and effects that it can do on your project um so i will link that down below so you'll be able to find it um give a huge thanks to the person who created them. I will also be linking that person down below. So I use the damn standard brush as well as the Orbs crack brush to achieve the engravings on the wood. For the smaller details that would focus a lot more on having a more uh, spiral look to it, I use the Orbs brush and to achieve the more deeper um, engraved look to it, I actually used the damn standard brush where I changed it from dots, which is the default, to the freehand and changed the alpha from alpha 01, I believe it is, to alpha 28. This is a square. Um, that's what I needed to achieve that look right here, that look right here, and that look right here, as well as this area. So something that I would recommend anyone to do while working on a ZBrush sculpt is to become more comfortable in changing your alpha and changing the stroke, changing the intensity, the draw size as frequently as possible to try to achieve different types of looks for your projects. I am one of those people where I did not do that and I would always wonder why my project looked slightly off from whatever I was trying to work on and I just needed to get more comfortable with changing my my settings. Uh, the great thing about ZBrush is if you want to go back to your original default settings, all you have to do is reset all brushes and they'll just set it back to how it was originally. So there is absolutely no reason for you to be afraid of you losing the original 
way that your brushes looked, there is always going to be a button that works no matter what, unless you are somehow able to somehow mess up ZBrush where it just does, never goes back to their default brush, but that would be a sight to see. Um, but in this case, what I did was um, I looked at my reference and I worked on a tablet. So currently I'm working on a mouse. So when I show you some of the um, details that I added, if you see any um, weird looks to it, it's because I am using a mouse. But with my tablet pen, what I did was I went over the concept art here and I just drew with my pen on top the shape of it so or the um the stroke of it and what i did was i uh snapped it to a face that i would be able to see and i just took my pen and did a stroke so for this i would recommend creating layers and saving as frequently as possible when you're creating details um because you know maybe i get this stroke to look perfect but this one looks a little bit wonky if you don't have layers or you don't have previous saves you would then have to delete this bring in a new one that looks like this and start working on that and it's just too much time it's better to just stop recording delete the layer and then restart again than having to go through the process of appending a <laughs> sub tool to your project so what again I just practiced the strokes and had it flickered out. So here, I'll just show you. Again, I changed the intensity. So usually intensity is a little bit higher. But in this case, I wanted to be able to get that look. So again, it's just a mouse. I'm using my trackpad. But I just practiced the strokes. I made sure to be recording while working on the projects to get the look that I wanted. And I just kept practicing it. And then after I was happy with how it looked, I moved on to the next part, which was the door. And I took an orbs brush because it's easier to get that tapered look at the end. And I just practiced. And I changed the orbs um, cracked look. So this one is the one that I use. I changed the intensity. I changed the focal shift. And I changed the draw side. Um, constantly trying to find a sweet spot that I really liked. And then once I found it, I used that brush. And I just used my um, memory of the stroke to achieve the look that I was trying to get. Um, constantly mess around with your lazy mouse settings. Um, because you might be able to find something that works for you. In this case, since the tutorial that I watched helped me a lot with the wood texturing, I kept it at 20. And that is honestly how I was able to achieve these wood texture look. Um, so, like I mentioned beforehand, the more squared look of the um, engravings was done in damn standard with the alpha that was squared with a soft and looked and then more of the tighter um tapered out edges where it was more going inwards like a v was done with the orbs um brush and i just alternated between those brushes and um worked with layers on and off to make sure that i was get getting that look that i was trying to achieve and it worked very well um a thing that I would recommend for you guys to do is if you see I have my project in pieces which really did help a lot when um, working on one piece at a time so what I just did was I went into poly groups since I did export this in combined all you really have to do is just go to poly groups and auto group and it will auto group it automatically for you into uh, the pieces almost as though it was in the outliner of like Maya if it was just in a group and if I wanted to just focus on this piece right here all I would do is um, command shift F this is on the Mac by the way and then I would be able to just focus on this piece and get the look that I was going for so that is how I did my um, look of the wood um, and now I will be explaining how I did my edges. Before beginning on that, I would like to mention how I was able to get this look right here. So if you look here, specifically this line right here, you see that it stops right before it hits uh, this area right here towards the sword so it wouldn't take away from this area. Uh, the way that I was able to do that was I just marked off where this piece starts 
So like the corner piece that would go right here. I just marked it very faintly here. You can even see it um, if you look close enough, but I just marked it faintly. Um, so when I was working with this brush, I just stopped at that area. I went a little bit forward since I knew that the metal piece would be covering it and just smooth out the edges. And that worked out. That's honestly all I did. Um, I marked out areas again. Um, a thing you can just do is create a layer, call it um, markup, and mark those areas that you have. And then once you're done creating the um, outlines of the engravings, you delete that marked up layer and it's all clean again. The next uh, stuff or the next tool that I ended up um, working on was the flag. The flag was pretty simple. Um, in this case, I didn't want to waste geometry on getting this piece right here, which you can see right there. Um, in Maya, since I knew that I could be able to bake that down. So what I just did is I ended up taking my um, masking tool. And I just masked out this area as well as this area. Went down to the deformation. Went to inflate. I inflated it. And that was about it. Nothing too fancy. The next thing I did was do the wrinkles. In this case, I went to brushes. Oh, I went to brushes and did the inflate tool. Changed from the dots to freehand. Lowered this. And then just out of that. So I'll fix that later. Don't worry. Well, I'm not going to be using this anyways. So you see how intense it is. I ended up just lowering the intensity. Try it again. See, okay, that's a little bit too thick. Let me change the draw size. Okay, that is what I want to get for. So after I add that, you're like, is that all you do? Well, no. So the next thing I did was I smoothed out this area right over here where the inflated part meets the actual model. So I wanted to add a smooth transition between that. So I just smoothed it out. This, In this case, you can actually... In this case, I actually did up up my intensity for my smooth brush a lot so I could be able to get that um, transition to look right. So I just did it with the edge. Looked at the rest of my project, smoothed any other details out, saw that, and also add a little bit more to this area right here. And saw, okay, that looks good. Yeah, that's how I want it to look. So I am now ready to show you how I did the edge. Oh, wow. <laughs> how I did my edge damage. Um, again, I am doing this in a mouse. So <laughs> if some of the way that my tools look while I'm trying to show you looks uh, off, it's because I'm using a mouse. So here I'm just going to hide my engravings so you could focus on just the edges and here you have a great tool if you want to in the layers to just turn off the eye which is going to turn off the visibility of that so you can see quite the difference it made but here you can see how much of the um, model is affected by the damaged wood. Um, a big thing I would tell you that I had to do a lot was to make these edge damages a lot more noticeable from a distance. Um, I have a tendency to add, like I mentioned before, have, I have a tendency to go a lot smaller than larger. So in this case, I had to make the damages on the edges um, a little bit bigger so you would be able to see it from a distance and to give it more of a stylized look. Um, another thing I also had to do while um, working on this project is constantly look at the reference to see where the chips are. So you see a chip here, a chip here, um, a bigger damage here, somewhat of damage here, since this is kind of um, blurred for me. I just assumed there was a bit of a damage there. Um, damage right over here, damage here, damage here, a bit of damage over here, and some worn out edges here. So in here, all I did was alternate between three brushes. The three brushes was trim dynamic, trim adaptive and trim or not trim but orbs um flatten brush that slash there we go you think it would be of but it's not um so here i started off 
first with my what I started off with was my trim dynamic brush um, and what I did was up up the size and I'll turn this layer on so I can show you how I did it and I just went in probably changed the the size a little bit more and this is where you just need to experiment don't don't forget you have the ability to command Z um, so use that as often as you can just come in here add a little bit of edge damage and there we go although when I'm looking at my wood references wood doesn't react like this it doesn't just have these jagged edges towards it so the next thing I did was go to my orbs flatten brush and that was T and went in here or more or less kind of smooth that area out a bit to get that smooth worn look that wood is known for because when you look at it wood doesn't necessarily like crack and then like chip off like rocks do they get worn worn out over time especially around the edges so when you look at a worn out table the edges are rounded then staying sharp and having like a chip so for me, my goal was to get that worn out look towards it. Another thing you can also do to clean up those areas is just smooth it out. Um, I have a tendency to have my smooth brush like down to like 12 and work with that. So you just have to rotate and make sure that you're getting areas and make sure when you're sculpting that you're looking at it from any type of angle that you're working in. So sometimes you might have to look here and be like, that looks nothing like it does right over here so sometimes you just have to just rotate around and if you see something fix it or smooth it out or work with that area um, so that is what I did to get those bigger chunks of um, pieces of the wood or indents what I used was the trim adaptive um, this one was a bit more tricky to do with the mouse so I would recommend using a tablet and pen but for me, all I really did was just go in here and go back and forth and then go up and down a little bit. Um, I changed the intensity of it so it wasn't so harsh. And I just tried to get a natural look to it. I smoothed it out a lot. And you can see that having like almost a squared um, chip, it does round out. And you just keep building off of it. So I went all around the model and I went behind the model as well and added those um, edge damage. So if I turn this on, you'll see the edge damage that will pop up on the back. So you can see right over here, I added that edge damage to the back because I knew that this was going to be viewed at all angles. So I wanted to cover my bases. So that is officially how I did the edge damage. I used three brushes. I changed the intensity. I changed the draw size. And I just build off of that. So if you want, what you can do is, what I usually do is I take my trim dynamic. So I'll take my trim dynamic. Uh, do all the basic edging. Um, worn out edge. And then after that after I make sure to see yeah I like how those edges look I go back with the orbs flatten brush um, and I just smooth those areas out any places that still have those kind of damaged look to it or more of like a um, rocky look to it what I do is I just smooth out with a very low intensity so 12 to 6 usually works for me and then after that for the bigger chunks that I see around here and here I just take a trim adaptive brush change the intensity and I build with that uh, little pieces smooth it out see how I look uh, see how it looks and then do it again and again and again until I'm satisfied with it um, I would recommend keeping those layers on separate so maybe you look back and you're like mm, maybe I shouldn't have made that trim dynamic um, brush as intense as it was so you can just come into the layers and change the intensity of it so my tip while working on building 
a worn out look to your project is to create layers for each of the brushes that you use and that's why I say usually try to work with one brush during the whole session on the project and then another and another is because let's say that you think that you or let's just say for example that I thought that I did my trim dynamic brush um effect a little bit too harsh I can go in here and change the intensity of how it looks so um, in this case I was very happy with how my edged look I got critiques on it I got critiques on my wood engravings and now it was on to the metal look which was super easy um, not gonna lie I honestly just did the edge uh, damage to it so for the metal look I did not use the orbs flatten edge or the orbs um, or the trim adaptive brush. I only used the trim dynamic brush because I wanted to be able to achieve um, that rough, like that more rough, um, sharp, um, worn out look to the project. So that is what I did. I just went across the entire um, metal edging um, and just added some bigger chips in some areas, um, but just literally took my brush, cranked up the lazy radius um, for the stroke, and just went straight across it, up, and then that's it. That was all I had to really do. The last part that I did was the props. In this case, there wasn't a lot that I really needed to do to this. My main focus was the sword, um, the helmet, the armor piece, and the wood block holding up the sword. So for the sword at least, let's start with that. I honestly didn't do anything with it. Um, since it needed to be sharp, I didn't soften or harden any edges over there. Um, I just added the two holes that were here. And as you noticed beforehand, it is here, here, and here. So I'll just quickly explain what I did. What I just did is took a standard brush. I changed it to um, freehand clicked option I'm on Mac by the way I clicked option and then I just well I need to make it smaller so I'm gonna make it like that took option just drew and it just inverts the brush so then going like this I'll go like this and after that I kind of just take a smooth brush soften it a little bit and now it has the look of the holes in it I did that so I wouldn't need to draw that in um, in Sketchfab I or not Sketchfab, but Substance Painter. I just want to be able to use the curvature map and AO for that part. So after that, my main focus was getting these uh, scribes um, in there. And all I really did was look to how this looked, made straight lines, and then took my move brush, um, made it very, very soft, and just pushed some of these edges away. Um, and that's all I really did for this part right here. For the wrap, uh, it was fairly easy. I just took a damn standard brush and swiped over it around the curve, and it worked out fine. Nothing too fancy for that. I wasn't trying to spend too much time on that part. The next part that I needed to work on was the bookcase. I added this um, deep end towards it. Uh, it looks better in Substance Painter right now. It's just doing that weird thing, but I never had that problem in Substance Painter, um, but it always gave me that look in ZBrush. After that, I kind of just rounded out some of the edges to the belt. Uh, most of the details of the belt will be coming from Substance Painter. The next part that I mainly focused on was the helmet. In this case, since I saw in the helmet, um, if you see over here, there is a dent, there is a scratch, a hole, and a scratch. Uh, orbs brush has great scratches that you can use. They're called slashes. And here, I just went and dragged um, the detail out. So let me right there. So all I did was take it, dragged it out, and you'll have it there. Sometimes it won't come out on the first time. You'll just have to change the brush and find an angle where it'll pop out like there. I'll come out, but it won't hit that edge. So sometimes you have to go at like an angle for it. Um, but you'll just have to try out the different brushes that they have there. That's what I did to get this one, the skinnier one and the more deeper cut one. I added, um, I just took my trim adaptive brush to create that little dent there. And then I took the mallet brush to create that there. I just ended up taking my smooth, um, my smoothing brush and going around the edges to create that transition so there's not a harsh line similar to how I did my cloth. 
So after this, after I'm completely done sculpting, after I bake down my layers, which you're supposed to do once you're done with layers, once you know that that is how you want your project to look, bake down your layers before you do anything else. And the next thing you want to do is go into Z plugin, pre-process your current model. And once that is complete, and it will show you that it's complete right here, you will go here and decimate current. The reason why I do this is because I need to bring this into Maya to check and compare it to my game res model and change anything if there's a huge drastic change between my game res model and my sculpt. Thankfully, I did not really have that much problems with my game res. I actually virtually had to change nothing to it. So um, in this case, I ended up using my decimated version for substance painter for my high res. So I decimate current. It went from 30 million active points to I think 1.6 million. So the way I did that was um, decimated it. Once I was done, I went to export and it will export just the one sub tool and it's going to take a while. So here it is. Then I went to my uh, SPA uh, or SP high, which I knew that it was going to be used for substance painter. And here you can see I had bookcase high. So I just name it that and it will become an OBJ. Keep it as an OBJ. That is what you're going to be using for your high res model when you're baking down your textures and substance painter. Um, I always do mesh by name. So when I bake, it will acknowledge the naming convention over the actual position of the model. This I feel is a lot better when you're baking um, props and you're baking down um, the high res onto your low res. It just helps you keep things organized as well as knowing where everything is. So just kept it in the same groups. I ended up separating my metal rod and my flag from each other. And that is all uh, I am done with the high res. And now I am ready to continue on to my next step, which is step three, and that is the game res and UVing process. <laughs>